Many years ago, on the edge of a great forest, there lived a poor woodcutter, his cruel wife, and their two children, a little boy named Hansel and a little girl named Gretel. The family had almost no money at all and times were hard. One night, when the wife could not sleep because of her hunger, she said to the woodcutter, Starvation stares us in the face. We have but little food left. There is not enough for the whole family. In order for us to survive, we must take the children deep into the forest tomorrow and leave them there. The wild beasts will make short work of them. The woodcutter did not want to do this, for he truly loved his children. Then you might as well start making coffins for the four of us, said the hard-hearted woman forcing him to agree. By chance, little Hansel was lying awake in bed nearby and overheard all. He woke Gretel and told her what was in store for them. She began to cry, but Hansel told her to be brief and promised that he would take care of them. Quietly, he slipped out of the house and gathered little white pebbles, hiding them in his pockets. Then he went back to bed. The next morning, the woodcutter's wife awoke the children and told them that they were to come along on the day's work. She gave them some bread to take with them. As they went along, Hansel secretly marked the path by dropping the little white stones from his pockets. When they reached a spot deep in the forest that the children had never seen before, the woodcutter and his wife stopped. Now, children, she said, gather up some twigs so we can make a nice fire. This was done, and once the fire was blazing, she said, Now your father and I will chop wood while we are away. Rest by the fire and eat your bread. Having eaten, the children's eyes became heavy, and soon they were asleep. The woodcutter and his wife slipped away, leaving the children alone. When Hansel and Gretel awoke, it was the middle of the night. The air was filled with the growls and the snarls of animals hidden by the darkness. Gretel grew afraid, but Hansel reassured her. The moon came out and the pebbles that Hansel had dropped shone like silver. By following them, the children were quickly led back to their house. They knocked at the door. Their mother was surprised to see them again and scolded them for having gotten lost, even though it was not their fault. The woodcutter was glad that they had returned, for his heart had been heavy without them. But their mother was just as set on being rid of them as ever. That night, when she thought the children were asleep, she again forced her husband to agree to lose them in the forest. As before, the children overheard her cruel plan. The next day, Hansel was given some bread for provision, and the family went out into the forest. This time, they went deeper than any of them had ever gone before. Hansel dropped breadcrumbs to mark the path, a fire was lighted, and the children were left to sleep. At night, when they awoke, they searched for the crumbs to guide them back, but they were gone. The hungry birds of the forest had eaten every one. For two days, Hansel and Gretel wandered about the forest, trying to find their way back. But they only became more and more lost. They managed to live on the few berries they were able to pick. When they were about to give up hope, they suddenly smelled something something wonderful and delicious. Following their noses, they soon found themselves standing in front of a little house made entirely of candies and cakes. The roof was made of cakes and the windows were of transparent sugar. Hansel and Gretel could not help themselves. Gretel started to eat part of the roof and Hansel ate one of the windows. As they ate, they heard a little voice inside the house say, 
Nibble, nibble, mousy. Who's nibbling at my housey? But the children thought it was only the wind they heard and kept on eating. All at once the door opened and an aged woman came out of the house. Very sweetly she asked Hansel and Gretel inside. There she fed them on pancakes and berries and cream while they told her of their adventures. Then she tucked them into the softest little beds they had ever slept in, saying that they need not be afraid, for they could stay with her. Poor children! They did not know that they had fallen into the hands of Rosina Sweettooth, a wicked witch who enticed unwary children with her mouth-watering house and then baked them into a great big pie and ate them.